Hi everybody, this is Krista, also known as Bluminate on Instagram. I wanted to do a quick tutorial to demonstrate how you can create those stacking cups with the Planner Society Digital Christmas Kit for 2017. I've been seeing a lot of people making the stacking cups. I've also received some messages from people asking for help, so I thought I'd uh, do a quick tutorial. First off, I'm going to want to make get rid of this print line or the border so let's go to my print page setup and you may not have this option if your printer is not does not have the capability for borderless printer but most newer printers I have an inkjet Canon MG7720 I know it works for that and also for an HP OfficeJet Pro 8610 and OfficeJet Pro 8620 so I'm gonna select the Canon MG7720 I'm going to go to US letter, I'm going to select the borderless, US letter borderless, and click OK. Now that gray print border is gone, I want to set up my registration marks. If you are just going to design on here and print and then fussy cut with scissors, you don't need to do this next step. But if you are going to design, print, and utilize your silhouette, cameo, or portrait to cut out your die cuts or stickers, then you do need to make sure that you set up your registration marks. I am going to select type 1 for the cameo portrait. Also, at this point, you might want to do file and save your project to the hard drive. I tend to lose some documents or projects because I don't save. It's a bad habit of mine. So let's go to our folder where our digital files are. I have mine in this folder here. Let's go to the Christmas files, icons. Let's, I know I want to get some bows, so let's get some bows first. Let's see, I'm just going to drag and drop and shop in the digital, in, the, in my files. Let's drag this one. There's just too many cute ones to choose from. It makes it really hard. Or you just have a lot of options that you can get just create, just keep creating more and more. Never ending. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go down to the mugs. You can also use this search button um, to click if you know you're just looking for Christmas or if it's under mugs. It just depends on how you have um, named your files. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in all the mugs, making sure that I do not override it by hovering over another image. Just drag it into an empty home. So I'm just going to drag them on. And I normally do this, I'll just drag a bunch of icons on here so that I can then start designing with it and figuring out and I don't have to keep clicking back and forth. So let's put, because I have OCD, let's get all the bows nice together. And then the mugs. It won't really matter because I am going to move them around. Another tip that you might want to do is you might want to keep these here to use for other things and you can right click and duplicate it and then actually use this one as the one that you're going to manipulate or utilize. Um, sometimes I do that, it just depends. So I'm going to start off with family, joy, peace, Mary. Let's leave it like that. And somebody had suggested when I was doing an Instagram Live that the way that she gets these to all line up would be to highlight it and to highlight it. Let's see, let me zoom in. To highlight it, just put your mouse, click anywhere off onto the side. I have, I guess I have a habit of always going in the upper left hand corner, but you really could go from any direction here and then. Um, Go to your right hand side and click transform panel and we're going to choose on, on the horizontal center, align. Okay. So you could do that just to get it kind of in a general place and then you can start moving them. So I'm going to use my arrow keys. I just find I have more control with the arrow keys. Oops. And this one I am going to right click 
and bring to the front. You might as well do that to the Mary too. Right click, bring to the front, arrow keys, and then I'm going to probably have them tilting. Let's just keep. Let's tilt some of these. Turn this one a little bit further down. Then I want a bow. Let's see which bow. And choose, I think, the buffalo plaid. Okay, and right click, bring to the front. And now my bow is too large, but you want to make sure that you grab it from any of the corners, so upper left, right, bottom left, or right. If you drag it from the middle, you're gonna distort the image, which is fine if that's what you like. I'm gonna, my best friend, the undo button. And let's make it smaller. Not sure if I'm gonna want it on the side. Hmm. Maybe I'll just keep it straight in the middle. Just make it a little bit smaller. I think that looks good. Okay, and once I'm happy, I think I'm gonna, so right now what I'm doing is I'm gonna select and I'm holding the shift key so I can select these images because I do wanna bring everything down just a little bit more. There, okay. So now I'm going to highlight all the images right click and group. You can also use shortcut keys but just so that you can tell what I'm doing I want to use um, the right click the mouse features. Next step would be to go to the trace tool select trace area so let's click that and highlight over your image. Now you need to make sure that this gray box is highlighted over everything or it will not recognize it so here you can drag it from the right or left, top, bottom, corner, it doesn't matter. So it, the gray, once you have your gray highlighted shadow over the entire image, let's bump the threshold up to 100. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. You can see a lot of, I call this noise. So there's a lot of noise on here. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to try to balance out between the low pass here and the threshold. So I like to put the threshold at 1. So you can go ahead and type that and then hit enter. Or you can use these um, arrows up and down. I'm going to use the arrows for the threshold. So let's bring that down. And I can usually, um, I usually select between 97 and 98. That seems to be the magic numbers. 98 looks good. So I'm going to select trace outer edge and as you can see it did not pick up any of those lines so now I'm going to select my line color and I want to change this red line to the to a blue trace line unless you want your silhouette to cut directly around and again if you are not using a silhouette to cut this once you've designed it and grouped it and placed it and on your paper and loaded it up with whatever other die cuts or stickers you want to make, then you could go ahead and just print it and fussy cut with scissors. But the next few steps will be specifically if you're going to use a silhouette. So I'm going to try to click on a red on this red line because I want that to be a trace line. You see here it changed to the red box got smaller so that means it's selected. If I select the actual image, this is not, the red box is not highlighted. Sometimes you'll see this transparent box will be selected but I'm going to go back and click on the red. Oh, let's click off, click on a red line, there we go. And you see how this box is now changed to a smaller box compared to the other so it's selected. I'm going to now select the blue, change it to a blue line. Let's zoom out so you can fully see what I'm doing. Let's select, and I'm going to move, if you're using the basic edition, I don't believe you can move the boxes around these options, but or tools, but for the designer and above, 
um, you can. So next, let's select the offset panel, making sure we're still selected on the blue. So if you're selected, let's see, if I just select this image as a whole, then if I click offset, see how you're getting these lines? That's not what you want. So let's, and you can't undo this. Your best friend can't help you, but you can just delete that. So let's delete that and make sure. So now let's click off. Let's click back on. I'm going to select the blue. So see how we're selected the blue? Now if you click offset, it will make the offset that you're looking for. And let's use the buttons or if you have your magic number, you can just plug it in and hit enter. I am going to choose 45. I think I am almost at that age, so let's go with that number. And I, this line I do want to change from the blue to now a red, so that's our cut line. And that's literally it. Let's group it all so that we can position it where we want. I'm going to zoom out so you can fully see the page. Now what I can do here is I can duplicate it, make more. I can copy, paste. Let's see, let's duplicate it. You can, oops, I'm not used to using that. I'm used to using just copy, paste with hotkeys. So if you copy, paste, let's duplicate it one more time. And let's spin it around because maybe we could fit three on here. See? So there's all these things that you could do. Now uh, what I would also, or let's show you. So you can, um, again, don't resize it by pulling it from the top, the bottom, or the sides because you will distort it unless that's the look that you're looking for. My best friend undo, get it back to the original size. I can, if you want to resize it, make it smaller just or bigger, larger. Just pull it from any of the upper, any of the corners, left, upper left, right, bottom left, or right. Now, um, there's another way you could, if you know exactly what size you want to make it. I work with a B6, so I know that a B6, usually the inserts are about 5 by 7. And if I want this little bow to kind of peekaboo out of my planner, what I would like to do is go to the Transform tool. Go to the second option which is scale and lock this so that the aspect ratio will stay um, proportioned and I'm going to change this to maybe about a seven and a half so that maybe half an inch will peek out and then so seven and a half and then click enter so now it's it's distributed it's balanced out so the width has now changed does that make sense I'll undo it so you can see so from a 2.9, so about 3 inches, two, 3 by 7, I'm changing, make, making sure this is locked. I'm going to change it to a 7.5, click enter, and now it's changed it to a little over, almost like a 3 and a quarter by 7.5. Apply just in case. Sometimes, I don't know, you need to do that, you don't need to do that. And then, if I want to make this so that the front will look like this and then the back I can glue two pieces together and it'll look pretty and say the same thing on both sides although this has words on it so let's see we go to the replicate tool and let's choose the mirror left yeah see how the words are backwards but if you grabbed a cup that didn't have the words on it or maybe those other I don't know if you could use the pattern ones. It depends if it's the same exact size. But it's things that you can play around with. And if it doesn't bother you that the words are kind of backwards, which I don't think it would bother me, then I would just glue it to the back. So let the silhouette cut this out. Both pieces, adhere it together, and then run it through the laminator, and you've got a front and a back. The other thing that you could do is you could run this through like this run it through where copy paste so let's say I have this and that third one so if we run it like this oh I made it much larger that's why <laughs> let's make this one smaller for this tutorial okay so if we had 
So we're ready to cut this one out. If you run this through the printer this way and then you print a pattern paper on the back, like a buffalo plaid on the back, then when the silhouette cuts it out, you'll have a nice pattern on the back. I hope that makes sense. So let's go now, the next step would be, your final step would be to file, to select from the file and print it, or you can use your hotkeys. And once you print it and load it up on your silhouette mat, you can go to the send. And here, I cut by line. So I'm gonna select line, and I see how it's selecting the blue and the red line. I don't want it to double cut around here. So I do want it to leave a white border around, which is why I did the offset and changed the offset color to red. I'm gonna unselect the blue. So now my silhouette is recognizing to just cut this red, the red lines. And I'm checking to make sure that none of my icons are touching and it's within the cut box because this red line is your cut box. Try to stay away from your registration mark, all the information on where to cut, how deep everything is, I believe, in this little black box right here. So it's very important. So I am set to a full cut, which I'm not sure if that's the one I actually want. Yes, that is. Full cut. And these are in user-defined, so I, I've saved these cut settings. So I'm going to go to my full cut and I have it on an auto blade for my cameo or you would have it on a ratchet blade on a portrait ratchet blade. You would have to manually switch it, change the blade depth or the blade yeah, blade depth or you can choose the auto blade. So my cameo three is saying it could not connect because I don't have it plugged in at the moment, but my blade is at a four. My speed is at a three. The force is at a 33 and I have tried lowering this and it's just the magic number that works for me. Passes, I have it set at 2 which means that it's going to, the silhouette will cut once all the way around the entire image. That's the first pass. The second pass will be a second cut around the entire image and I just find that I have a cleaner cut um, and I don't have to use my little snips or scissors to kind of cut little like inside these areas. It's just a nice clean cut. So once you've confirmed and figured out your cut settings and everything looks good, then you just hit send and that will send and cut at your silhouette. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and please feel free to message me on Instagram is the best place to message me if you have any questions or you can take a video uh, if you're having trouble and maybe I can try to help you. Okay, happy holidays everybody!